Welcome to a brand new series. In this series, we are taking a look at events and jobs and queuing and basically taking your Laravel application to the next level. When I first started in Laravel, one of the things that attracted me to Laravel was the ability to do this offline. Essentially, not make your users wait for you to do a computationally expensive operation. Now, this can take the form of sending an email. For example, we think of sending an email as a fairly quick thing. But when it comes to page load times, waiting five seconds for an email to be sent, well, that is a long time. So that is when you queue off emails. Another thing that drew me to Laravel was the event dispatcher and the ability to have these events, these things that happen in your application that trigger a bunch of other logic. This is something that when you're first starting out seems like such a difficult concept to comprehend. But now that we're working on some advanced Laravel topics, I want to take the time to build a contest. And what this is going to be is imagine that we were running a daily contest where somebody could come in, type in their email address, and then every day or every night at some point, we pick a winner. That winner gets an email and so on and so forth. Now, there's going to be a lot of rules we're going to add to this contest, eventually basically emailing out maybe an Excel sheet or something like that that accumulates all of the winners for that week. And all of this is going to be done offline. So the front end of the application that we're going to be working on is going to be extremely simple. It's just going to be a box where you can enter an email. The rest we are going to handle in the back end and it's all going to be automated. And once it's up and running, we're not going to have to do anything to it whatsoever. So I have a brand new Laravel 8 application here. I will CD into it. I called it contest. And one of the only things I really want to do is go ahead and bring in this new Breeze package, which used to be Laravel UI. It's gone by different names. It used to be part of the core, but all we need to do is just require Laravel Breeze. Now, all you have to do once Laravel Breeze is installed is we just have to run the Breeze install command. We can find that under PHP Artisan. And if we look in here, you'll see it right here breeze install. So we'll go ahead and run that command. And basically all that does is it does the typical scaffolding that you're used to, and it does bring in tailwind. So we'll go ahead and do our NPM install and NPM run dev. Now this series is not really intended for those that are just starting out with Laravel. We really want to tackle the medium to advanced developer that just wants to step it up and take this to the next level. So we're going to skip a lot of the basic things that we typically cover, such as what NPM is, what package dependencies, all of that. We're going to skip through all of that. That is all beginner stuff. We're going to tackle the difficult stuff. So I'll let this go ahead and finish and I'll be right back. And here we are. Now you may see this from time to time. I think it's always worth exploring. You could just run this command and it will just upgrade it for you. I won't do it in the video, but I typically would go ahead and do that. So with that being said, I am running Laravel Valet. So I should just be able to visit contest.test and move on from there. So we pull open my browser and there it is. So contest.test, all it has is just my beginning page. And we do have the breeze package, so we have login and register, which to be honest, at this beginning stage, I don't have any plans for it, but I really did want the scaffolding. If we check out what we have now, we'll move over here, open up contest under resources and views. We do have all of these nice components and dashboards, but more importantly, we have an app.js, which brings in some important things as well as a package.json, which has some scripts as well as brings in Tailwind and Axios and a lot of the things that we're going to want to use. So this gets us started with this project. I'll close that up and let's go ahead and get started and run our test suite. Now I am assuming that this is not going to work and sure enough, we have an issue and it's a very simple one. It simply means we don't have a test database. We can go into our PHP unit configuration file and starting in version eight, you do have these two lines right here that are commented out. I will go ahead and bring those back in. And all it does is it gives you a DB connection of SQLite and in memory. This is going to be perfectly fine for our application. I'll go ahead and reformat that so it's nice and clean. And let's rerun our tests. And sure enough, everything is working. Now we do have a lot of tests in here and these are just brought in from Breeze. We have new tests now that takes care of making sure we can do password resets and email verifications, and a lot of other cool things. But for our purposes, we do need to make a new one. So PHP artisan make test. 
And let's go ahead and make sure that we can actually add this email address that a person can enter. We'll go ahead and say contest registration test. And we'll go ahead and open that up. So contest registration. And here we are. I can go ahead and get rid of this top line. Don't need that. We'll add a new test and it will simply be an email can be entered into the contest. There we go. We'll hit an endpoint, which will be a post endpoint. And that is going to be contest. And we're going to hit that point with some data. Really, I just need an email. And for now, just abc at abc.com. That's all I need. Now, when that happens, I do need to make sure that I have a model. And then I can make sure that I look in my database and I do, in fact, have that email registered in. So what we'll do is we'll say this assert count of one. And if we look in the documentation for database count, we need the table first and then the count. So we'll go ahead and pass that in first. I'm planning on calling my model contest entries. So I will say contest entries. And I assert a one. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And of course, we have an issue right away. There is no such table as contest entries. PHP artisan make model contest entry. And I should have created that with a migration. So I'll actually go ahead and remove that really quick. That way I don't have to do it later. So app models contest entry. Go ahead and remove that. I'll run the command again, but this time I will need a model. And let's go ahead and create a factory while we are at it. So I'll go ahead and create all of that all at the same time. And sure enough, now I can run the test again. And there we go. So no such table as contest entries. Now the reason for that is that we are not refreshing the database. So I'll use the refresh database trait. And now new error. Fail is certain that the table contains the matching count of one. We only found zero. And of course we did because this doesn't even exist. Of course, we know that is happening because we are taking care of exception handling. So let's go ahead and run it without exception handling this time. And our error should be very different. And sure enough, it says post. This doesn't exist. So we know that. Go ahead and open up our web routes. Let's add it right here. Actually, it's going to be a post route. There we go. Contest. And let's hit the contest entry controller. And the method is going to be store. Run that again. Contest entry controller does not exist. PHP artisan make controller contest entry. And then if we run it again, now we should not have. Error. I'll tell you what it is. There we go. So this is going to take me a little while. I've been writing Laravel for a long time. And this new change in Laravel 8. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to. So let's go ahead and switch over to the new notation, which is going to look something like contest entry controller class. And then as a second argument in this array, we'll pass through the method name. In my case, it's going to be store. All right, let's try that again. And now we do get that store does not exist. So just a little change. But the nice thing now is that I can click through right here, which is the nice part. It's a nice trade off that we have. So store. And here we go. Now we end up back here. All right, so we are going to do some validation. So we'll say data. And we'll go ahead and grab request, which we don't have yet. Let's go ahead and request it right here. We'll say request. We'll pass that through as request. So request, validate. And the rules are going to be very simple for now, just email. And we'll leave that blank for now. We'll go ahead and put everything under test. So we'll leave that blank. And then we're just simply going to store that in. All right, so we'll say contest entry. And we'll create with this data. And there we go. Let's go ahead and give that a go. Let's see what we get now. So mass assignment. I'm not a huge fan of mass assignment. So I will go ahead and turn that off altogether. So we'll say guarded equal to none. I'll go ahead and open up the whole model. And now we have contest entries. There is no column like email. OK, so create contest entry. Contest entries table and to this table, we will add a string for email. 
and there we go we have one passing test it doesn't do much yet obviously I want to put a couple of more things under test and the first one being that it is required so let's go back to my test and let's write a new one here that says email is required we'll go ahead and get rid of this exception handling we don't need that anymore we'll go ahead and copy all of this and we'll actually pass through an empty string right there then I expect zero at this point let's see what we have whoops I need to grab this one emails required and it's passing that is not right obviously we expect this to be a zero so why is that passing well let's go ahead and find out we'll say this without exception handling and there we go okay so we have a constraint violation basically saying we have an issue email is not nullable so we need to go ahead and fix this and of course this has to do with the fact that we are passing it through because we don't have any validation rules so let's go ahead and make this required and now we get email is required instead so if we turn off validation exception now we get a green test again we can run the whole test and we're good so at this point and stage I feel good enough that we can actually go ahead and create the UI for somebody to enter their email into our contest this is going to take a very simple shape as I said already I don't want to worry too much about the front end so we are going to uber 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 simplify this whole entire thing so I'll go ahead and grab all of this right here and it's all gone I believe this is it a couple more there we go and we're gonna say welcome to our contest alright let's see what that looks like in the browser hit refresh welcome to our contest perfect because we are using Tailwind I'll go ahead and style this really nicely very quickly well I a couple classes here one of them being a large font size and font bold so we'll say font maybe semi bold and we'll also say font maybe 2xl I don't know what is actually available to me what we can do is maybe in a different tab I'll go ahead and run a watcher so npm watch whoops npm run watch okay let's let this run in the background and with this compiled we should have text 2xl and we should also probably make it lighter so we'll say text blue 100 maybe 200 let's try that and it still doesn't work and actually looking through it I realized that we are not even pulling that in now if we look through resources views under layouts we should have this app that blade and if we look in here we need to copy the styles and the scripts so I'll go ahead and bring that over right here we'll paste that in right there and now there we go we are back in business we just lost the color of our background so to do that we could probably change it right on the body here we could say BG blue maybe 800 and that's not taking effect because I probably have BG gray right here 100 I'll get rid of that let's try that again there we go maybe even a little darker let's go to 900 and there we go all right so welcome to our contest this will have a simple input field which we'll style later on but all I know is that the name of this needs to be email and then we'll have a button and the button is simply going to say enter now again styling wise we can really do a lot with this but we do need a form so let me wrap that in a form and this is going to slash contest and here is my form hit refresh there it is doesn't look very pretty so let's go ahead and flex this as a container let's go ahead and do a flex column and there we go so that's looking somewhat better it's not the greatest but it'll get the job done so when I enter something here ABC sure enough it goes in there but it says hey this is a get method it's not supported by this route we know that let's go ahead and change our method to post and while we're at it let's go ahead and do CSRF we know we're gonna need that hit refresh type something in enter now and there we go so it says that contest unknown database 
We already resolved the database issue. We just have not really done it outside of testing. We resolved it for testing, but not for this part. So I can do basically more or less the same thing. I can go into my environment file and I can specify this to be an SQLite database. Perfectly fine for our example. And so all I would need at this point is just to create that database. So inside databases, I'll create database.sqlite and I'll migrate my database. All right, refresh, and there we go. It did work. In fact, I can actually go into Tinker. I can't really see it. Let me go ahead and switch this over. There we go. So inside of Tinker, I can say contest entry all, and we do have that in there. Now, one thing that did occur to me is we don't have this to be an email validation. We need to put that under test. So we'll do that and then we'll call it a day. We'll say email needs to be an email. Pretty self-explanatory, but we need to make sure that, that validation is in place. We'll type in some gibberish and we still expect zero. All right, let me exit out of here, run our test. And there we go. And of course, sure enough, we have, we expected zero, but we got one. And that's simply due to the fact that we have the wrong validation. So I'll go ahead and make it required and make it an email. Now, this is some very light testing. We may go back in the future and do a little bit harder testing on the particulars of what gets put in and all of that. But to be honest, that is really outside of the scope of this. I'm just trying to get this project ready for us to actually start tackling some events and all of that. So not uberly concerned with this part of it. I think you know that you could do a little bit more robust testing. And sure enough, we are passing. We'll pass through the whole thing. And there we are. So that's going to wrap it up for episode one. Just a quick setup on this project, as well as explaining what we're going to be working on. But in the next episode, we're going to continue to dive through this project and dissect what we're here to talk about, which is the events, the queued events, and everything else that we have in store. All right. So I'll see you in episode two.